Good morning, everyone, or good evening. I uh, uh, hope you all are having a good night. It is Lakidra. I thank you all for joining me on today. I pray you all are having a blessed day, and I'm telling you, you will. Hallelujah. If you haven't, you will. God is going to bring to you a powerful word on today, so get yourselves ready, get prepared, because the Lord's word is about to show us the truth. It is about to show us the way, how to bring forth restoration in your marriages, people of God. And so I want to jump straight into it because we're going to go through some things and they don't tell them how long it may be. So I want to jump straight into it. But first of all, I want to thank everyone that has liked, subscribed and shared and commented. I thank you for all your prayers. God bless you for that. All these things are so encouraging to me. So I really appreciate that. Thank you all so much. But I want to get into this today um, with you guys. I want you all to really see something here. That you're not dealing with your spouse. <clears throat> it's very important that you all know this. Because as long as you think you're dealing with your spouse or flesh and blood, you'll give up. As long as you don't see who is behind this. You'll give up because you will say to yourself, you know, I, I just don't have time to keep dealing with this because they just, they don't love me anymore. They don't want me anymore. They're, they're doing all these evil things to me. They have abandoned me. They have left me. They, they are with this other person. They don't care. And, and you know, you know, you, in other words, you'll be wrestling with them, which is the wrong person when it's the enemy. Who was behind it all see and that's one of the deceptions that the enemy uses his biggest fear is for you to know that it is him well why because he knows that you can cast him out he knows that by your words by your words you can be free by the words of God speaking out of your mouth or being spoken from you. And so his biggest fear is for him to be exposed because he knows that if you come to your spouse and not tell him to get out, he is allowed to stay <laughs> because he, he only can obey what he hear you say. The Bible says that, right? Jesus tells us in Luke that he has given us power over all the powers of the enemy. Okay, so by your word, you can tell him to go. So he's afraid that if you find out it's him, that you're going to come and attack him. And therefore, he won't be able to remain in that house, which means your spouse, who is the house. Remember that Jesus talks about us being the house. So you seeing him being the one that's there, then he say, oh goodness, the cover has been blown. Now I'm about to get cast out. Okay. Now I'm going to show you in a minute about that. So remember that. Get your eyes off of your spouse because as long as your eyes is on him, you're going to see the wrong one and you're going to miss every time. The enemy will stay there. So it's because remember, it's warfare. So you have to make sure you are coming to the right enemy. And I'm telling you, it's not your spouse. I know you may think it is. It looks like them, but it's a spirit behind them. And many of you all know what I'm talking about. You have seen it with your own eyes. You have heard it with your own ears. You know that the things you're seeing is not your spouse. And that's why you just... You can't believe it. And some of you all are seeing these terrible things happening so bad to you till it'll make you want to give up. But you won't give up as long as you know who is behind it, that they are under another influence. Okay, so we're going to get to that. Let's get to this real quick. Now, in Galatians 5, it tells us here in verse 19, when you follow the desires of of your sinful nature the results are very clear sexual immorality impurity lustful pleasures adultery sorcery hostility quarreling jealousy outbursts of anger self-ambition dissension division envy drunkenness wild parties and other sins like these paul says let me tell you again 
as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we already see that if this being someone's lifestyle, the kingdom of God is not there. They, they have not inherited. And remember, the kingdom is God's righteousness, his life in us, his influence in our hearts and minds. And he goes on and he says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And so we can see here that when the Holy Spirit is there, we'll see these good things of righteousness. But when a person is up under the influence of their sinful nature, which is wickedness, the result would be the sexual morality, the adultery, the fighting, the jealousy, the outbursts of anger, the abuse, the division, the, the hostility. Uh, there will be a lot of conflict. That There will be division. Uh, of course, adultery, you know, and, and adultery and sexual behavior, sexual sin. Well, what is happening? They are up under this nature of theirs that is caused by wickedness. It's a force. It is something else. And we know that it is not the Holy Spirit. So if it is not the, the Holy Spirit, or if it is not God who is the Spirit, who else is it? It's another spirit. And it is tied in with the nature of our flesh, with human, with humankind. And so when you see these things happening, you already know that it is not God, it is someone else. It is evil. It is ungodliness. It is unrighteousness. This person has not been born again. The righteousness of God is not there. Okay? And so I want to go further. I want to go further because I'm going to I'm going to take you all deeper with this. Now, in Colossians 1, it says in 21, this includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. By your evil thoughts and actions. So this is how we all were at one time. We were far away from God behaving like this. We were his enemies, meaning we were against God. We were separated from God by our own thoughts, by our evil thoughts and actions. So where is this evil coming from? Well, we know it is the God of this world. It is the God of this world, Satan, because the Bible tells us that in chapter four of second Corinthians in verse four, Satan, who is the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. For one, we see where the evil is coming from. Where is these evil thoughts coming from that Colossians just told us about, that had us separated from God, walking in rebelliousness, walking in this, sick, in this sexual sin, walking in these ungodly things, walking in these things that had us bound. Satan, the God of this world, who has blinded that person's mind, they can't hear, they can't see, they don't believe what you are saying unto them. They are under his control. He has blinded their mind. They don't hear, they don't see their, be their actions, this bad behavior. The God of this world has blinded their minds of those that are not hearing, those that don't believe what you're saying unto them that is right or that is the way that God wants them to live. Otherwise, if they believe, they wouldn't be where they are. If they know that what they was doing was wrong and they are on their way to that place of destruction, you think they'll stay where they are? No. Someone is telling them that it's okay. Someone is telling them that it's okay. The same way when we were away from God, we who were separated from God had these evil thoughts and actions 
we felt that we were okay. It was our own minds that the devil had blinded, had us away from God and separated. And it is them. It is the same with them. This is why they don't believe. This is why they don't see and they say foolish things. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, even though they know they're married to you now, you'll tell them if they, they're living in adultery. They, they don't even hear that. They don't even see that God would judge all adulterers and who among us. And that marriage should be honorable, the Bible tells us in, in Hebrews 13. That marriage should be honorable. And yet they are here, you said, and still won't do it. Because Satan don't allow them, won't even let them believe what you're saying. So it goes back to him, his deception. His deception, his spell, his influence. His influence that he has over them. But, but I want us to see, Timothy talks about it as well. Second Timothy. Chapter 2 says this here. Verse 26. We, we'll look at it here. These people that are bound, you guys, our spouses, that's not hearing. That is away from God right now. Look at what is happening with them. When we pray and stand in the gap. What would happen in verse 26? Then they will come to their sense and escape. From the devil's trap. For they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. They have been held captive to do whatever he wants. Not what they want. They are doing what he wants. So we have to come against him. We have to know what what are we dealing with and who we dealing with. See, and, and, and if you can't see who is behind this, then you, you'll never be able to get to the bottom of it. That enemy will stay there in your marriage and in your home for years and years and years until you cast him out. Now, some of you can see you dealing with something evil. You, you see it, but you just don't know how to get to it, how to deal with it. You know, you, you don't realize, some of us, some of you don't know about warfare. You don't know what you're supposed to do. You don't know the principles. But let me tell you, you have been given spiritual weapons. The power of God is in your tongue, is in your mouth life and death you can decree and declare a thing you can say to any mountain or any devil get out you might have to say it for a while but eventually he's going to leave look i'll never forget i had this um this spirit of fear had attacked me years ago you guys uh when i first had uh had come to know the Lord, and you know, I was a newborn babe in Christ, so I was just growing, you know, I was starting to really grow, and study the word, and get to know God, this was years, and years, and years ago, but this wicked spirit, I'll never forget, it was a spirit of fear, and torment, came, and began to just attack my mind, day and night, I would hear things in my mind, terrible thoughts, terrible thoughts, I couldn't sleep, it would harass me, day and night, but I will continue saying, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I, I just will say that every day. Every day. I mean, this thing, this wrestling went on for about three weeks, guys. I will be feel, filled with so much fear. I, 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 I will be laying in bed next to my husband. He will be resting and I will just be up. Those tormenting thoughts. The fear would, would grip me. Not during the day, I noticed it wouldn't be so bad. But at night, it would be all type of evil thoughts, guys. I, I would be wondering, where is this coming from? 
and it would have me filled with fear but i would just pray i would speak out of my mouth i rebuke you i bind you in the name of jesus you a lie devil get behind me you know not even knowing what i was doing guys all i knew was just keep talking and i would pray and pray not knowing that something was happening that i was really attacking the enemy back until one day i realized it had left me because I was in the middle of that thing speaking. I find you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get out, devil. You're a liar. You know, just saying all those things and praying in the spirit until I, I'm telling you, I could sense something left. I knew the presence of God had came so strong. It left. And I learned from that day. I said, good Lord, that was a wicked. That was a spirit. It left. The peace came back. It was such peace. I was free. And you know what? I never had that problem of a, a sense. It was as though God had showed up by me speaking. God showed up and made that thing leave. My peace came back. That spirit of fear was gone. And that and I learned something that day. I say, wow, this thing, these, this is real. These things are really real. We are really dealing with spiritual wicked beings in this earth. They are in this earth with us. We are not the only beings in this world. They are in this world, invisible. We just don't see them, but they are there. There are billions of demons in this world. If only you all could see. But I'm not going to get into that. That would be another topic for another day. But Because I, I want us to stay focused here. But I'm going to tell you, it took like three weeks for that thing to break. I just kept speaking it and I say, Lord, they really obey us. Demons really obey us. And I was young in my faith, guys. I wasn't clearly, you know, uh, strong in the word like I am now. But And it worked. And it worked. It may take some time, but just stay with it. Stay with it. Now. I, 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 uh, so we see that the enemy is really, he functions, he operates like a person, like a, a, a ruler who, who binds people, who imprisons them. He imprisons them where? In their minds and even eventually their bodies. There are people that manifest. I didn't see people manifest demons out of them. I didn't, I didn't hear demons come out of people, speak out of them. Jesus cast out demons. Okay, so let's 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 be let's be wise now. Let, let let's let's get wise now. We got to stop looking at things out of our carnal way of thinking. Because that will keep you ignorant. That will keep these wicked spirits still hanging around. You can't get your loved ones free if you can't see. If you don't know what to do, and the Lord showed us what to do. He showed us what to do because you may say, well, what do we do? What, what, what do we do? Look, how do we come against this? Well, let's look and see what Jesus did in Matthew's chapter, chapter uh, 17 in verse 18. And Jesus rebuked the devil. He says, and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour now this is based off of jesus who had cast out a demon that had this young boy bound had him bound but jesus rebuked okay and we're going to see what does that look like to rebuke okay but let's go on and in verse 19 okay well before we skip down in verse 18 it says and the child was cured from that hour or he, he, why? Because he rebuked the demon that was in the ball and it left him. It left him in that same very hour from that moment. And in verse 19, it says, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could, could not we cast him out? See, they were trying, but they couldn't do it. And Jesus said unto them in verse 20, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, 
remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you if you what had faith you say to the thing go be moved see that's what he was telling him he said you could you could even speak to something as hard and heavy and mighty and and strong like a mountain of the one of the greatest battles or the greatest obstacles that is impossible to be moved and you all know that Jesus was talking about a big obstacle, something in the way. You can speak to it and it'll be moved. He said, even and then I believe, and even in the natural, in the spirit, he says, nothing will be impossible for you. You can speak to anything and it'll be moved. But in our case, we're dealing with a demon. We're dealing with demons who have the minds of our spouses, who have blinded them. Why? They can't hear. How has he blinded them? They can't hear. They can't understand. They cannot see the righteousness of God. They can't see the kingdom of God. They don't see that they're on their way to the place of destruction. And we already know where that is. The place where there is everlasting torment and brimstones and fire, the Bible talks about. And many people don't even believe it. But I'm going to tell you, hell is real. But anyway, they are bound and don't even see that they are being held captive oh but we see because the word of god is giving us eyes to see and ears to hear now if you don't believe it you won't be able to make that thing go because of your unbelief you cannot move mountains you cannot cast nothing out you cannot tell any wicked spirit to get out of your house if you are not believing if you don't believe if you don't believe and obey the instructions of God, if you don't really believe that you could say to this thing, be gone, and it and it obey you, you have to believe what Jesus say. I don't care because it not ha it haven't changed yet. Keep doing it because Jesus is not lying. He's not a man like us who lies one day and 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 miss over here and make a mistake over there. No, he is without sin he never sinned he knew no sin the bible says so when the lord gives us instruction we should obey him and take heed without our uh reasoning and and questioning and, and wondering because you see they they didn't they couldn't get a thing done by them doing that and then he goes on and said in verse 21 how be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting now prayer and fasting is very powerful people of god and you may ask well why because fasting like i says it brings our fleshly way of thinking our fleshly way of seeing things or or our human way of seeing things or our human way of hearing things and our human way of understanding things and it causes you to understand and see from the way God sees it, which means you would have the faith. You will have the faith and you will also be able to see and understand and have the wisdom to make the mountain move or to remove this situation out because God will be leading you. So it helps you to receive help from God. Fasting and praying helps you to receive the help you need to make this devil go. Okay? So it's not like you punishing your body, people of God. Look, you, you're not punishing your body here. Jesus already been punished for us. Okay? So you're not beating yourself down with this, you know, this legalistic idea. Oh, let me hurt myself. Maybe God will hear me if I starve myself to death. Okay, no, 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 no. That's not what fasting is about. Fasting is saying, Lord, I need your help. Therefore, I bring my body down on the subjection that has no power to do this. And I'm asking you for your help who is able to do all things. So I'm, I'm showing you, Lord, that my flesh has no power. This is why I turn away from what it wants. I turn away from giving it what it, what it, what it desires. And I surrender myself unto you. And like I said, you guys, that's like a love language to God. He loves when we come to him out of humility and meekness. The Bible says he will raise us up. 
okay so it's a way of humbling ourselves so we can receive the help from god and that's what the law says you know you got to humble yourself you got to do it with prayer and fasting and that, that there is a time when the holy spirit will lead you to do that so you can see clearly you know i'll never forget i heard a young lady talk about that uh that when she was fasting one time she didn't realize that something was about to happen later on that week but she just was led to fast as she normally would do but something happened while she was in the middle of that fast uh days you know as days had went on because i think she said she was like on an eight day fast or something but i think she said something happened and took place um around about like that fourth day of the fast and her son was attacked something happened to him where he got injured real badly and she didn't know what to do it looked like she was gonna have to rush him to the hospital it was her baby and she said because she was still fasting she had been fasting that week the holy spirit began to allow her and give her words to say because she was panicking at first but all of a sudden she says it was like the lord took hold of her and begin to show her and help her to say what needed to be said and one of the things she said he the holy spirit had her to begin to pray and say lord i thank you that you love my my child you love him so much he's healed right now and she said instantly her child was healed you see because she was open to the spirit to lead her because she had been on that that fast god had gave her the strength helped her to pray about things she didn't even know she was going to have to pray for see so fasting in other words guys it keeps you in line with the holy spirit he can easily lead us when we're fasting and praying he could you could see and understand better you can hear better okay so the lord that was was preparing that young lady or that sister in the lord she didn't know that trouble was ahead so the lord is letting them know and was letting the disciples know that fasting and prayer is a powerful weapon it'll help you win battles when you're on the attack and so i'm telling you i saw a lot of things break in my life you know and i was able to hear a lot of things happen uh, i was able to hear in the spirit when i would fast this is why i i've been able to see a lot of things and know a lot of things you know it was not out of my own flesh it was because i was able to hear by the spirit and fasting and praying would give you the answers you're needing from god and so the law was letting them know you should have been fasting and praying because there are demons that you need to have the wisdom to have in order to over overcome them there are demons that it's going to take wisdom the wisdom of god to outsmart and so the law was letting them see that for one you don't have faith you don't have faith because you don't believe but if you would have been fasting and praying you would have been able to see and believe and then you would have been able to stand against this demon but in your flesh you won't be able to do it so guys i'm telling you you stay with it because you're not you you may not see things happen right away like i told you battle sometimes takes takes weeks and weeks and, and maybe months it all depends on what what type of struggle you're in you know our, these people our loved ones our spouses you'll be surprised what all they bound with we went down the list in galatians what what did we see adultery witchcraft sorcery deception we saw anger we we saw division uh all types of of sinful behavior that has them away from god the enemy has them captive so it's by it's by speaking and casting out i rebuke you devil in the name of jesus let go of my marriage steady coming against them i see is you you lose my husband's mind or you lose my wife's mind satan i bind you in the name of jesus it is written i see you are the one who is causing them to do things that you want them to do so i bind you in the name of jesus lord in the name of jesus i pray that you will bring them to repentance open up their eyes and ears because satan i see has blinded them but satan i bind you 
I command you to take your hands off of their minds. Take these blindfolds off of them. You know, and, and it is the truth. That is exactly what we do because you see now what is going on in the realm of the spirit. You see now what you're targeting. You see now what you're able to stand against and what you're wrestling against. And so that's the key, you know, seeing what you're, what, what, what to go after, seeing the problem. You know, it's like a doctor. He cannot help his patients be healed if he don't diagnose and see what the problem is. He's not going to know how to treat them. Well, it's the same with us. You're not going to know how to get rid of the problem. If you don't see that it's a wicked spirit behind it or some demon that has come in. Because he has this whole, has the whole world under his control. Those who are away from God, they think it's them, or you might think it's them. But that's the greatest deception that Satan could ever have a person in. When he won't allow you to see that, it's, that it is him. And my heart goes out to so many of, of people who I hear say, want well, my spouse. My spouse doing this. He knows what he's doing or she knows what he's doing. Okay, well, that's what the enemy wants you to believe. Because as long as he see that it is, long as he he can get you to believe that it is them and not him, well, he could stay there and therefore you won't be able to say get out. Because <laughs> he's afraid that's what's going to come out of your mouth. But if you don't believe that your words have power in them, he could make you give up and stop commanding him to come out. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get you not to believe that your words are working because you don't see anything happening. But if you only could believe the word of God that when you say to the mountain or when you say to him, go, it's going to happen. If you don't believe that, trust me, you won't say this too long. You're going to give up and go back to what? Oh, my spouse did this. My spouse done that. You're going to go back focusing on the wrong person. And the enemy going to say, oh, thank you. That was close. Whew. I was wondering, you know, when, when they was going to stop tell, trying to get me to get out. I was wondering when they was going to stop telling me, I rebuke you, get out. I was hoping that they would stop saying that because whew, I knew eventually I was going to have to leave. Because God was going to see that I leave. See to me leaving. Because he has given them authority over me. Jesus said, I have given you powers over all the powers of the enemy. I've given you powers to tread up on serpents and scorpions. And nothing, he says, shall by any means harm you. Okay? So it is the truth. It is the truth, people of God. But if you don't believe it, you won't be able to make the mountain go and you won't see this enemy come down. But it will, as long as you declare as speaking, speak, speak over this situation and command them to go. You see who has them. You see who has your spouse. You see that talking to them doesn't work. It's someone else there. Okay. Now I'm not trying to bring fear or spook anyone out. But it is the truth guys. Okay. The Lord is, is not. Look. He, there is no lying in him. If he says you speak. You can say go. It doesn't matter if it's a mountain. In the way. It will obey you. I've given you powers over all the powers of the enemy. I've given you powers to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall by any means harm you. But you have to obey and do what he says. You have to do what he says like he told Moses. Moses, stretch out your rod over the sea and command it to open up. So that the children of Israel can cross over on dry grounds. Take your authority, Moses. Or go to Pharaoh, he will say, he had said, and command him to let my people go. Or he will say, you know, speak right now and send forth plagues. Balls came. Frogs came against Pharaoh. Flies came. Balls, you name it. Famine came. Every time Moses stood against Pharaoh, destruction was steady hitting Pharaoh. Plagues and everything came until death came. He lost his, everyone in Egypt lost their firstborn son. 
every time Moses went with the word of God in his mouth and spoke it against Pharaoh, what was going to happen? It happened. It happened. It may then happen right away, but it came till he had to finally let go. So every time you go against this enemy, you may not see what's happening, but it is happening. By your words, God's words that are in your mouth. Why do you think these things are written in the words? So that we could see and know the truth and have wisdom and see who is this devil? Who is Satan? What does he do? How does he work? What, are, what is his plans and purpose? Well, these things were written so we may know the devices of the enemy. So we won't be ignorant to his devices, Paul says. Okay? And so, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Precious people of God, this is it. Stay with it. All right? And now I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Lord, we just thank you for opening up our eyes and our ears. We thank you, Lord God, for your word that is truth. And right now, Father, we all come together and we rebuke the enemy. We resist the devil and we command him to let our spouse's minds go. We say, let their eyes be open. Devil, we cast you out in the name of Jesus. You will not have these marriages. You cannot have them. They are not yours. We take them in Jesus' name. We come against you in the mighty name of Jesus. We see you. You are not here. You have been exposed, devil. We have put you on notice. And we cast you out. <clears throat> we say, demon, flee. <clears throat> Get behind us now. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are under our feet. It is written. Jesus has spoken. He says that we can cast you out, order you to leave, and you shall obey us. And we know that it is done. In the name of Jesus, our spouses are free. They are being released. They are no longer being held captive by you. You are no longer going to control their minds. You are no longer going to cause them to rise up against us. You are no longer going to cause them to walk in rebelliousness against God. You are no longer going to cause them to be ruled by your powers. Get out in the mighty name of Jesus. Get out. The blood of Jesus is against you. We come against you right now with the sword of the spirit. You have no power, no dominion over God's people. Right now, devil, we are not afraid of you. We have authority and power over you. Now get out of our homes and marriages. Take your filthy hands off. You are out. You are out. And we know you are out. You are trembling because you are bowing to the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, for showing us this truth. Thank you, Lord God. We believe it. You have settled it, Lord God. It has been settled in heavenly places. And we obey your authority and your commandments. This day, this evening, or this night, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that victory, victory is ours. Victory is ours. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for it now. We praise you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, we receive it. Lord, this is for everyone who is listening. I stand in the gap. I stand in agreement with them. Everyone that is listening, let them see that it is done. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it now. Oh, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. For we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against wicked spirits and power that are in high places, and they are commanded to go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious people of God, for joining in with me on today. And remember that God loves you, and I love you too. Until next time, okay? <laughs>